celebrate the love of Jesus. You are so welcome. Why don't you put your hands together like this? Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's sing this together. Every fear overtaken. Every war comes crashing down. I am free in your presence. Oh. Sing you have lifted. You have lifted my burdens You surround me with your grace Full of hope in your presence Oh, Come on, shout it out And I, I can't stop singing but your love I can't stop singing but your love Worship Him right now. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Let's sing this together. I praise you forever. Your love goes on and on. I sing to you, Jesus. Because you are. You are my first love. Sing one more time. I praise you forever. Your love, your love goes on and on. I sing to you, Jesus. You are, you are my first love. Sing hallelujah. You are my first love, Jesus. Sing hallelujah. celebrate today God because you are always fighting for us come on everybody like this come on come on Jesus. 
is a strong and mighty tower. And Lord, the righteous run to you and they are safe. So we run to you, King of Kings. We run to you, Lord. You are our refuge, our strength. You are rock of ages. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are faithful, Jesus. Yes, you are. And you sustain us, oh God. Now, friends, I do not know what you're going through, but all I know is that Jesus is more than enough for you. So why don't you lift your hands today and call out to Jesus. He's right where you are. He's more than enough. The Bible says He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And right now, He's reaching out to you right where you are. Just call on the name of Jesus and He will save you. Lord, you are more than enough, oh God. You are more than enough, oh Jesus. You're all we need, oh Lord. When we have you, we have everything that we need, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You are sufficient for me, more than I'll ever need. You're more than enough, abounding in love. You are my everything. Come on, let's sing this together. You are sufficient for me, yes, you are more than I live. You are more than enough, more than enough, abounding in love. You are my everything. Why did you sing this over your life? You are sufficient for me, more than I live. Yeah. 
Sufficient for me, more than I ever need. You're more than enough. I'm bounding in love. You are my everything. Why don't you sing it over your life right now? You are sufficient. Yes, that is who you are. More than You're more than enough, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Wow. Jesus is sufficient. He's more than enough. In fact, friends, everything you and I need is found in Jesus. Only Jesus can truly satisfy. Money will never satisfy you. Sex will never satisfy you. Jumping into another relationship will never satisfy you. Only Jesus can truly satisfy. David understood this in the Bible and in Psalm 23 verse 1, he wrote these words. In the Amplified Version, it's written like this. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. Wow, friends, the Lord is our sufficiency everything you need is found in him and so today we're going to lift up our voices to him in prayer trusting that there is no need that he can't meet he has everything we need so friends let's pray together shall we jesus we lift up our eyes to you you have everything we need money cannot sufficiently provide Human beings can't sufficiently provide. Only you can sufficiently provide. And so we trust you today with our needs. And we ask, Lord, will you meet us at our point of need? In fact, Lord, will you do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think, ask, or imagine according to your power that is at work in us. And I pray that every single one of your children will have a testimony on their lips and a song in their heart that says, look what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in my eyes because you have exceeded every expectation we have. Satisfy your children, we pray in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen and amen, amen. Wow, Jesus is sufficient. Trust Him with everything that you need. Well, friends, it's such a joy to spend some time in worship together. But I'm even excited that from here we get to dive into God's Word. So excited about the new series, God Promises. And to share God's Word today is my brother, my friend, Andrew, our pastor at our Western campus. Would you put your hands together and welcome Andrew as he preaches God's Word. Thank you so much, Brian. Wasn't that great worship? Absolutely amazing. Andrew. I'm excited even what he's going to do as we share the Word, as we believe God, that God is a God of promises. Amen. Come on, one more hand of applause to my man, Brian. Thank you so much for pastoring. Thank you for pastoring downtown. We are so excited that you would do that. Together we are building people for Christ. So before we dig into the Word of God, I want to say welcome, welcome once again. God has been absolutely faithful to us. We've seen God throughout 2020. Now you're in 2021. You ought to thank God. God. So as we get ready for the word of God today, I just want us to start off by praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are God who loves us. We thank you that you are God of promises. We pray that the next few minutes will be such an amazing time as we dig into your word because we know the entrance of your word brings understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen, Amen, Amen. So like Pastor Brian has said, we started a new series, God of Promises, and today we are going to be looking at one of those amazing promises. And God says he will be our provider. 
we want to look at God as our provider. You know, when you look through the Bible, you will realize that God indeed is our provider. In fact, we call him Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. When you go to Genesis, to Revelation, when you go to Matthew, when you go to Malachi, all through the Bible, we see God providing for his people. This is one of the greatest promises that God gives us. God reminds us that he is our provider. He delights in providing for us. I love the words Jesus mentioned in Matthew 6, 25. This is what Jesus says about God being our provider. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of those. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So, do not worry, saying, what shall, I, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after those things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all the things will be given to you as well. Wow. We see Jesus describing to the multitudes, they shouldn't worry about clothes. They shouldn't be worried about provision. Why? Because God is our provider. Because God is Jehovah Jireh. He provides. It's in his nature. From beginning to the end, we see that God is our provider. And so he tells people that do not worry about what you'll eat or drink. You see, 2020 brought a lot of worries. People were laid off from jobs, their businesses collapsed, and people were wondering, where will we get provision? But I am here to declare to you that our provision does not come from what we do necessarily. It comes from the blessing that God puts on our lives. And so God reminds us today in his word, I love what verse 25 says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. The scripture is reminding us not to be anxious, not to worry about provision. Why? Because our God is our provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. And so you may be asking, how does God provide for us? And that's a good question. I want to share with you today two ways how God fulfills the promise of provision. So, number one. Number one. God provides supernaturally. God provides supernaturally. You see, in life situations and circumstances, they will put us in a place whereby if you are honest with yourself, you realize you need a supernatural provision of God especially having gone through this pandemic, and we are still going through it, you realize that life situations come to you. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You may have been a good at stewardship. You have gone through financial um, literacy. You do budgeting. You've done well. You do all the financial wisdom that has been given. But life can squeeze you, and you realize that you need supernatural provision from God. I can tell you for the last one and a half years, we have gone through this, uh, this season. We have realized that we need the supernatural provision of God. Economies have collapsed. And so we know that God provides for us supernaturally. How? I want to share with you a story about the children of Israel. 
When the children of Israel were going to the promised land, they needed supernatural provision from God. And this is what the scripture says. Exodus 16 verse 11. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was that quail came up at evening and covered the camp and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the round substance was fine, and when the layer of the dew lifted, sorry, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is this? For they did not know that it, what it was. And Moses said to them, this is bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Now I want you to imagine with me the children of Israel. They are moving to the promised land. They have nowhere to dig. They don't have seed to plant. It is a desert. And so they are wondering where are they going to get the next meal. And so they wake up in the morning, the scripture says, and they realize that God has provided the food. God provided the meat. God provided the bread. It was miraculous provision. And that's what we are talking about, that one of the ways God provides for us is miraculously. It is supernaturally God comes through and provides for us. The amazing thing about this story of the children of Israel, that God did not only provide for one day, he did it for 40 years. Listen to what the scripture says in verse 35 of Exodus 16. This is what it says, the Israelites ate manna 40 years. Until they came to a land that was settled, they ate manna, manna until they reached the border of Canaan. We see God's faithfulness to the children of Israel. Every day, God was providing. Therein fulfilling the promise that God is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. And he did it miraculously. What I love about this story, that God did not only provide food. He gave them clothes. He gave them sandals. It's amazing. Deuteronomy 29 verse 5 says this. Yet the Lord says, during the 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. I want you to imagine with me. They, had, they did not have to go shopping. My, love, my, my wife loves going out doing window shopping. They didn't have to go for window shopping. Every day they woke up, they had shoes. They had clothes. God was faithful to them. God was fulfilling his very nature. That is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. And he did it miraculously. I want to tell you today, some of you are listening in, some of you are watching, that God is a God who provides miraculously. There's a story of one of our church members. God blessed them with a child, a beautiful baby, but the baby had complications. And so the doctors advised them, you need to go for surgery. But the surgery was very expensive. They needed over 40 million Ugandan shillings. That's around $10,000. So as a family, they went and prayed to God and said, God, we don't know what to do. We need a supernatural move. We need supernatural provision. And so one month in the hospital, they operated on the child. The child came through well. And so towards the end of, the, of their time in, ho in, in hospital, the gentleman goes to pick the bill. But he was so worried, wondering, where will I get money to pay it off? But listen what God did. When he went, he asked the management to give him the bill. The management told him, true story, your bill was cleared. Wow. He could not believe it. He said, who cleared it? They said, we can't tell you. Every time I meet such a family, they tell you how God miraculously provided. Now, you may be seated there or you're wondering, but God does that for those people. I want to remind you that God is our provider. He still provides today. 
What he did for the children of Israel, he still does today. What he did for that family in Entebbe, he still does today. You may be there and you're wondering, does God hear my prayer? Maybe you are indebted, you need school fees, you need a house, you need a provision for food. Maybe your business has collapsed. You're wondering, does God exist? Does God perform miracles? I'm here to tell you that God still provides miraculously. God still performs miracles. I love the song, the song we always sing that is a way maker, is a miracle worker. Our God we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or imagine. He's a God who provides beyond what we can ever think or imagine. And so today I want you to trust him. I love what the psalmist says. I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. I'm calling you to go before God and tell him I need a miracle. I need supernatural provision from you. And let me tell you something. God loves you. He'll do it. He will do it for you. Because he's Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord who provides. It's in his nature to provide. And he can do it. Some of you are really squeezed. You need supernatural provision. God is able to do it for you. He did it for that gentleman and his child. He can do it for you. Secondly, so first we look at God. He provides miraculously, supernatural provision. Secondly, God provides through the work of our hands. I will say that again. Yes, God provides supernaturally. But secondly, God provides through the work of our hands. Isn't it amazing to know that actually God gave us hands and gifts so that he can use them as a way to provide for our everyday need. You see, I'm amazed what Scripture says. Scripture says he'll bless the works of our hands. Let's read it, Deuteronomy 28, verse 12. This is what it says. And the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, to bless all the work of your hands. I love that. To bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations and you will borrow from none. What the scripture is reminding us, God was reminding the children of Israel that actually I will put a blessing upon your hands. When you reach the promised land, I will put a blessing upon your hands. That when you put your hands to work, indeed as your God, I will use your hands to be a blessing so that you may have provision. So work is a blessing. It's so amazing that when the children of Israel reached the promised land, manna stopped coming. It stopped coming. It stopped raining. Why? Because God now wanted them to put their hands to work. I believe God is calling us as children of God, to start putting our hands to work. The beauty is this. He says he'll bless all, not some, all the work of your hands. I love what the writer of Proverbs says, Proverbs 14, verse 23. This is what it says. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. I'll say that again. The key word is all. All hard work brings a profit. The reason we have profit when we work is because God puts a blessing on our hands so that we can, be, we can have our daily needs met. God wants us to bless us. And he blesses the works of our hands. They are in providing for us. It's unfortunate that these days many people don't want to work, especially some young people. They want to stay home, play games. Uh, they're on Twitter and Facebook. And nothing wrong with those things. But the question is, are you working? Or are you idle? We're walking through the city in Kampala. And I find very many people discussing football, uh, what happened where, who won which elections, and all that. The question is, are you working or are you idle? 
I love what Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica. And he was trying to warn them about being idle and lazy. This is what he says. 2 Thessalonians 3.10. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Now, I want you to note the command that he gave them. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. I usually tell my daughters, if you have not worked, you shall not eat. And I add on, if you eat when you have not worked, you have stolen. So Paul says, those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Verse 11. Yet I hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and meddling in other people's business. Wow. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work to earn their own living. So Paul tells the church, look, stop being lazy. Stop sitting around and waiting for provision. He says, put your hands to work so that you can earn your daily living. Then he continues verse 13 and says, for as for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. 14 is amazing. It says, take note of these, of those who refuse to obey what we say in this letter. And the answer is simple. It says, stay away from them so that they will be ashamed. So Paul reinstates that biblical truth that God provides to us through the work of our hands. So stop being lazy. You see, as a parent, one of the things I've decided, I want to raise my children with a good work ethic. So one of the things I do, I tell my daughters, you have to clean your bedroom early morning. During day, you have to go out and sweep the compound. Now, that is because you're part of the home. But then thereafter, I tell them, you have to clean the car if you want to earn some money. And they do that. Listen, parents, let's not deny our children the opportunity to learn how, what hard work is by saying we don't want them to suffer like we did. Work is not suffering. Work is a blessing. When we work, God puts a blessing on it. That's one way God provides for us. And some people have said, you know what, Pastor? I have nothing. We all have something. And that's why Paul says, do not be idle. We all have something. The question I have for you, what are you doing with what you have, with the gift you have, with the talents you have? Put them to work. Therein God will provide for you. Could it be the reason why some of us are broke, some of us are indebted, some of us are in lack, and maybe some of us, the constant prayer request we have is always financial breakthrough. Could it be the reason we are like that is because we are lazy? Today I want to encourage you. Put your hands to work. God is going to bless the work of your hands. That is how God fulfills the promise of being a provider to us. So as I conclude today, I want to remind us that it's in the nature of our God to provide for us. He's Jehovah Jireh. And the way he fulfills that, he does it miraculously. Supernaturally, he will do it like he did for the children of Israel, like he has done in many people's families. But also, he does it through the work of our hands. And ultimately, the reason why he provides for us is so that we can be a blessing to others. We are blessed to be a blessing to others so that we can carry out the character of God in wherever we are. He's a generous God. He wants us to be generous. So when God blesses us supernaturally, Oh, he blesses us by the work of our hands is so that you and I can be a conduit of blessing to others. I pray that you're a generous person. But the ultimate provision that we have from God is not car, houses, new job, business. That is not the 
ultimate provision we have from God. The ultimate provision we have from God is Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate gift God gave us. I have a question for you. Do you know Jesus? Have you received him? So wherever you are, I'm calling you to receive Jesus. Because the Bible says, he that has the Son, Jesus, has everything, has life. I'm calling you to a place of receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. So I want to pray for you. Then thereafter, I want to pray for those who are asking God for miraculous provision, for supernatural provision. So if you're there and you don't know who Jesus is, today is your day. Would you right now bow your head wherever you are and just pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters today who have heard that you are God who provides and you do it supernaturally and you do it through the work of our hands. I pray that today they will also know you are God who provided Jesus to die for our sins. So I do ask that your Holy Spirit will convict them to come to you, Jesus, because you are everything to us. I pray for each and everyone who is receiving you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. But I also want to spend some time and pray for families and individuals that are crying out to God and they're saying, I'm in a tight spot. Some of you are saying, Pastor, it is tough. I've done everything. I need God to come through supernaturally. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will come through for you like he did for that family in Entebbe. That God provided that 40 million. I don't know what your need is. Maybe it's a debt. Maybe it's school fees. Maybe it's for a new car. Maybe it's a house. Whatever problem. Maybe your business closed. Many businesses in Kampala and around the world closed. I want to pray for such people. You need a supernatural move of provision in your life. God is not limited. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are struggling in the area of provision. They are wondering, will they ever have their business back? I pray that the move of God, you will move on their behalf and provide the resources they need so that their business will come back to life. Let the ruins come to life. I pray for those who are looking for tuition. I pray for those who are looking for money for rent. They need too much and they have nowhere to turn to. Lord, we turn to you, Jesus. Lord, like the psalmist says, I look unto the hills. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from you, Jesus. So, Father, today we pray. Would you release provision to your people that they will live in abundance so that they can be a blessing? That those who are looking for work, I pray in Jesus' name that they will have jobs. That 2021, they will have more choices where to work. Father, we know you are able to do it exceedingly abundantly above what we can ever ask or imagine. So Holy Spirit, have your way right now. Bless your children that they may know you and they can be a blessing to others. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a brilliant, good week. At Pototo, we are only able to do what we do because of the faithful partnerships of sponsors and friends from all over the world. My life was changed because I had sponsors from when I was a little boy after losing both my parents. I was able to get a family and a place to stay because of people who sponsored me. All of us here have been greatly impacted by the power of sponsorship. Sponsorship changed my life. In fact, I had a chance to meet a couple of ladies who sponsored me from when I was nine years old until I finished university. It was the best day of my life. If you haven't signed up before and you would like to, please consider doing that because there could be a Moses all growing up or a Liz all growing up and it will be because of somebody who supported them. Keep up the good work and I know God is going to bless you. And now it's time for us to give. Our generosity helps us to do the work of God here at Watoto in Uganda, wherever we are, both through the preaching of God's word with words, but also by practically caring for our community. And so friends, 
your generosity is making a big difference. And now, are you ready to give? Well, get your offering and let me pray for you. Now, Father, thank you so much for every giver and thank you so much for every gift that is going to be offered to the work of your kingdom. Bless the giver, but also bless the gift. And together, may we see an impact in our community for your glory and your fame. In Jesus' name I do pray. And everybody said, Amen. And now here are the different ways that we all can give. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code is 148775. That is 148775. And for Airtel, you dial star 185 star 4 star 9 hash and the business number is 700,000. That is 7 followed by 5 zeros. For more giving options, check out our website watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid and finally fill in your MTN mobile money pin. Thank you for your generosity. Watoto is a lot of things to a lot of people. We are a church that celebrates Christ and cares for community. We rescue Uganda's most vulnerable, raise Africa's future leaders, love and restore dignity to the forgotten. But to me, Watoto is my family. And right here is my mom. She raised me and my seven Watoto brothers and sisters here in this house. This isn't a building made of bricks, but it is a home made from love. I've completed university and now I'm a leader right here in Watoto, mentoring the next generation. My life would be very different without sponsors and partners from all over the world. Thank you for loving me and my family, Watoto. Your faithfulness 
much for joining us today. If you have enjoyed this sermon or you'd love to listen to some of our previous sermons, you can find them on our website at butodochurch.com. If you would love to pray with someone or even talk to someone, call the numbers appearing on your screen right now or write to connect at butodochurch.com. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. That is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And listen to 104.1 Power FM for programming designed just for you and your family. Stay blessed and have a beautiful week.